In this video, we will learn how to access the REST API with ClojureScript. In the previous video, we have accessed and manipulated DOM from ClojureScript. To have a complete range of tools for creating dynamic applications, we need means to communicate with the backend without refreshing the entire page. Of course, there are a number of frameworks, ClojureScript and JavaScript based, that make such communication much easier. Still, for showcasing purposes, we will simply use direct JavaScript objects and methods. Please note that the code we are about to implement will not work on older browsers like Internet Explorer 6 or 7, which provided different implementations for XML HTTP requests, and even no native JSON parsing or generating support. First, let's prepare the HTML page for simplified blog content management. We will need an input for the entry title, a button to invoke the closure script function, and a list to display the entries. As you can see, the button has a standard onClick attribute which references the add entry function in project one hello namespace. Just like in Java, we need to replace dashes with underscores when referencing closure defined symbols from outside. This time, we will define actual closure script functions in our namespace. We can remove the existing code as it is not needed now. We will first define a function that takes a list of entries and applies them to an unordered list in the DOM tree. As JavaScript's DOM works on objects rather than immutable maps, we will use the asset function to set the inner HTML property for the DOM element. Please note that we are iterating the provided data just like we would do with a closure collection. To retrieve the entry title, we convert the object closure using JS to closure function and then we treat it as a standard closure map. After that, we need to fetch entries from the backend. We know that there is an endpoint under the slash entries path, so we can just invoke. We will set a simplified callback here that will ignore all the errors and just wait for the state of the XML HTTP request to change to 4. Then, it will parse the JSON response from the backend and invoke the show entries functions defined before with the result, a list of entries. The last function that we need is a function that we have referenced in the HTML code, add entry. Please note that we use export here to uphold the function name during advanced compilation, which optimizes all identifiers. This function invokes the REST API as well, but this time we use the POST method. We also set a header for the request and we provide a request body. To make a proper JSON string, we use the stringify function. This function takes a JavaScript object, which we can create by applying the closure to JavaScript function to a standard closure map. If we would like to convert the JavaScript object to a closure script map, we would have to invoke the opposite function, JS to closure. Please note that in actual application, you may want to use EDN for simpler data mapping between closure and closure script. To not complicate the screencast needlessly, we will stay with JSON. Finally, when the processing is finished, we invoke the load entries function to reload the entry list. And finally, we add the load entries invocation to the script. Normally, we would wait for the document to load, but for the sake of simplicity, we will just invoke the function directly. We can now compile the closure script. This time, we actually need the ring server. Other than serving HTML and compile JavaScript, 
it will provide a REST API that we'll use. We can now add some entries and refresh the page to see if they work. If we open the developer toolbar, we'll actually see some XML HTTP requests. We can even fall back to the standard CRL invocation of the API to see the list of entries added in the browser. This concludes the ClojureScript section. In this video, we have connected our REST API to ClojureScript for user interaction. In the next and final section, we'll see some popular libraries for Clojure web applications in action.